What's up, Grizz Nation? Welcome to another edition of Three Point Stands presented by Mountain Dew. I am Megan Triplett, John Rose is on the other end, and looky here, we got a special guest today. It is Grizzlies player John Conchar. He is in quarantine life, but he took the time to join Three Point Stands. I mean, John, how have you been in quarantine? Um, I've been I've been doing well. Mm -hmm. Haven't really been doing much. Just been in Memphis for a little bit now and just playing video games, watching Netflix, doing the regular stuff. Not too much. What's the video game? What video game of choice? Uh, I've been playing Call of Duty a lot lately. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Go to. Some Warzone and getting destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like you're are you are you good at it or are you not very good? Uh I'm not that great. <laughs> just play it with my friend. Have you played Grayson? Uh, no, I will never. Like he's, all, he's, or one of the, it's one of those games that he's like awesome at. He's mm -hmm. supposed to be really good at, I think, every video game. Well, you know what's something that's new in quarantine life is your famous, famous mustache game that you got going on. You've been rocking it and posting it on IG throughout quarantine. So what's just kind of your um, inspiration behind the mustache? Um, I mean, no one can sees me really, and the mustache doesn't look that great on me, so... Uh, me and my buddies just kind of went with uh, the mustaches for the whole quarantine. So that's what we've been doing, just keeping <laughs> some entertainment. Mustaches by themselves are creepy. Are you yeah. creeped out by a Megan? Like, like if, if, if a guy just has only a mustache that's like a big, thick, like Monopoly guy looking mustache, like, are you creeped out by that? It's a little weird. It's it's you know it's a little weird, but I love I love people who are making fun of it when it's like kind of done in a fun way. When you kind of like you know how John has it kind of brushed down, you can brush it up. It's you know hilarious. I see it's kind of cleaned up today for us though. It's kind of cleaned up. Yeah, I cleaned it up a little bit because <laughs> I had this video, so I can look too much. Man, if you could get it to where you could like curl it up, mm -hmm. that that'd be amazing. That's okay. that's a game changer right there. Play that's a game the like one. whenever we get games back. Play a game with that mustache. I wish I could grow it that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing I wanted to ask you, because I I, I, told, uh, I told Chris Berta that we were doing this day, and he was like, you've got to ask him this, so I've got to ask you this. Um, why do you wear the number 46? Because you wore 55 at Fort Wayne. So yeah. why? Because we were like, 40. He, he, this is, 46 is a number you have to ask for it. It is just a preposterous number that that's what anybody wants to wear. So why 46? Um, I got a text one morning saying, like, all the numbers I couldn't be. And there were a lot of numbers, like, all retired and used numbers already. And I was like, all right, because 55 was used at the time. Because I think Joe Kim Noah was still yeah. mm -hmm. he was there last year. I think it, was, it said he was taken. So I was like, okay, I'll pick a new number. So essentially, I just went with the most absurd number I could think of without, like, <laughs> getting too absurd and, like, 73 or something. Like, that mm -hmm. like, high number. 46 seemed okay, so I just went with it. How yeah, has no it been backdoor. playing with 46? Because you know, that, that's new. How has it been throughout the season playing with that number? It's been good. I mean, it's kind of just a number. I don't know. I mean, so are you? will you go back to 55 next year? No, no one has it? Or are you just going to stick with 46 at this point? I think I'll just stick with 46 at this point. Ooh. I like it. I like it. Stick with yeah. 46. It's I a different know. number. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's like you and Aaron Baines. I know. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know. I didn't know anybody with it. And then I saw this. I was watching the Suns game, and I was like, "Oh man, Aaron Baines has it too." There we go. You should just go to forty-seven if you want to be the only one with a number. I, I will. I will say there has got to be nobody in the history of the NBA that that if you switch to forty-seven, nobody is ever going to want to wear forty-seven. Like nobody's just nobody could ever say, "Let me wear 47. So you'd be the only person probably ever in NBA history to have that number. Andre Karolinko was because he was AK forty seven. Karolinko was forty seven. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you can I go like forty eight forty nine. That's pretty absurd. Yeah, forty eight forty nine is pretty. Yeah, AK because it's, it's right. His nickname was AK forty seven. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Now something else that you've been doing during quarantine that you've been posting a lot. It's you know you've been playing with your basketball, your tiny tiny basketball goal that you have on your wall and I don't know if that one post that you did with you shooting the shot on like that one try you were far away from it but it was that like the first try and the first and it, and it went in uh no it okay. took me about 15 times to do that <laughs> gave me some entertainment for a couple minutes <laughs> a little bit what'd you say 
What's the most you've made in a row on that goal? Uh, maybe like two. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's super common goal. It's and time. yeah, it, it's not it's not too easy. All right, so you have your mustache, you have the basketball goal that's been entertaining you. What's kind of been your method of just kind of keeping in shape and just making sure you just stay ready? Because as we all know, we don't know how long we'll be in stay-at-home order. Um, I mean, I have weights here. I go out and runs. I've been to Shelby Farms a couple of times just to walk around and run. Um, yeah, that's really it. <laughs> Got to ride a bike. Yeah. Do you have a basketball like like a like a regulation like NBA ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do my I do dribble hand or hand dribbling and all that and yeah that's really what I do. Okay, okay, so yeah, so so you can you can work on your ball handling. What do you think um, the most important thing it is for you to keep improving on? Like if like if there was obviously you talk to the front office, talk to the coaching staff, and they want you to improve on a lot of different things as they want every player to improve. You need to work on this, 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 this. Uh, what would you say is the most important thing though, for yourself to improve upon? Um, just shooting the three, I think um, just being confident shooting what just when I'm open, just knock it down. Um, yeah. Just getting the, getting the gym a lot and just shooting threes really. I think that's what will help me a lot. Also, how do you get all the rebounds? <laughs> this, I, this is very true. I've always, I say it during every hustle broadcast. I, my, my partner on the broadcast, uh, Eli Savoy, we always talk about like, you just look up and it's like, dude, he is always around the ball. Like, you do have like that nose for the ball. Like, how did that develop? Um, honestly, I don't know. I noticed, I mean, in high school, I averaged a lot of rebounds, uh, kind of just came over to college. And uh, I mean, you need to get the rebound to go on the offensive end. So I just wanted to get the rebound. It's just an instinct. It's just a natural instinct. See ball, mm -hmm. get ball. Yeah. Go get the rebound. You know, I have to use your hashtag that you always use, Jitty. Like, you know, I want to see and get your definition of what Jitty means. Is Jitty a basketball term for you? Is it a John Conchar thing? What does Jitty mean? Um, it doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, it's just a word I made. Um, you kind of just... Use it wherever you want. It's kind of catchy, and that's how I, uh, that's how I made it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's just life. It's just, it's just life. It's just life. Yeah. You get bored, you come up with stuff. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think it was my freshman year of college, going into my sophomore summer, and you just get bored sitting around, and you just you make stuff up, you know? <laughs> now, have you reached that quarantine life where you just start talking to yourself? I know you're by yourself. You know, when you need someone to talk to, I think some people have started to literally talk to their pets like they're human beings. Have you gotten to that breaking point just yet? Uh, um, not really. Uh, I wish I had a dog or a cat or something just <laughs> to have like another person or some sort of thing here. But uh, I've been playing a lot of video games with my friends. And I've even just been talking all day, really. So, what kind of dog would you get? Uh, probably, uh, probably a wiener dog. Oh. Yeah, Dawson, yeah. Yeah, those are little cute dogs. Just, just go take Brandon Clark's dog. I know it's so adorable. I want to. That, that'd be great. Would you dog Jitty? Has to. <laughs> you have to. Uh, that'd be funny. I'd have to say it so many times then, and I can't overuse it, you know? I hear you. I... Now, John, we got to talk about some some topics that, that's been in kind of, you know, happening this week. And the biggest thing, we always talk about it every episode of Three Point Stands is The Last Dance. We got to see episodes seven and eight on Sunday where it dived deep into Michael Jordan's father's death and his, reti and his re first retirement baseball what was just your favorite part from those two episodes of the, of the last dance um you know i didn't watch the last two i'll be honest oh my but, gosh all right. I missed eight. i haven't seen eight yet i've seen seven but i was but i did see something on social media that uh it was like a minute long i think it's a, is it end of seven or end of eight where just like his passion his passion kind of shows of how yeah, episode seven yeah he just walks off yeah, and you know, you start you start crying just because just the passion he just put in the game every every day, every game. 
All right, since you haven't seen the last two episodes, how about just like overall, you know, with, with The Last Dance? I think it's been just kind of the biggest thing on Sunday nights. What have you taken from Michael Jordan's game that you didn't know, you know, about him before watching this? Um, I mean, I knew this, but he's just the ultimate competitor. Uh, he just wants to win every single game all the time. Um, I mean, it was I was too young to know all this. I guess I was born in 96, but um, just like just reading up on like Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and just listening to them talk and talk about Michael Jordan and the Bulls back then. It was, it's pretty cool. Now, Roser, I know you saw you said you saw the first episode. Was there anything that was new to you, especially when it, when it involved Michael Jordan's father's death? Okay, so what I didn't, what I forgot about, well, one, I cried when, uh, not, not during the episode last night, but like when it actually, when, well, wait, no, this, not, not with his father, but this was when he was announcing his retirement. Mm-hmm. I forgot that during the ALCS, the freaking White Sox are playing the Blue Jays. Jordan is at the game at Comiskey Park in Jerry Reinsdorf's box because Reinsdorf owned, owned, still does own the Bulls and the White Sox. Um, and Jordan's in that box. And during the game is when the news starts to trickle out. Well, then when it was officially announced, the press conference was the next day, which, by the way, completely just upstaging the, the LCS, the American League Championship Series, uh, totally did that. Um, I cried, and the reason why is I had tickets – the Bulls were coming to Memphis to play at the Pyramid, which John knows as a giant Bass Pro Shops. Um, but the Grizzlies used to play there, and the Memphis Tigers used to play there. And this is before the Grizz- before the Grizzlies were ever in town. We would get a preseason NBA game, um, and the Bulls were going to be the team. The Bulls were coming that year, and I had tickets. And then, uh, you know, he retired, and I was heartbroken. I was like eight years old, nine years old. Oh, forgot that it was done during that. It, that, that the news started leaking out during the ALCS. <laughs> oh wow! You know, and you know, for this episode, like I think these two, last two episodes, John, I think you're gonna like it even more because you got to see Michael Jordan's that tenacity that you were talking about, and like how his work ethic and like what he used to make him the ultimate competitor. He used people, he used experiences, he made up things in his head to be like, okay, I'm going, I'm going to be this, this, this person. And, you know, just like you, he, we got to see him play with another number. He went back to the 23, obviously, but you know, maybe there's just, this is kind of like the, 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 the stars are aligning for you. You got a lot of similarities of y'all's stories, just kind of, kind of. (laughs) And, you know, we got to ask you about this question. I really want to ask you is because over the weekend, a lot of the graduations were a lot of high school colleges had their virtual graduations. And this time last year you were graduating. Obviously, there's a lot of players out there who are in different predicaments because of the quarantine period. But what is something that you would tell your a year ago self, you know, if you could give them any advice? Um, advice for myself? Yeah. If you could go back um, in time and give a year, your year ago self walking across that stage any type of advice or just saying, like, don't worry. Uh, I'd, I'd say don't worry. Um, everything kind of happens for a reason and just kind of go day by day and yeah, don't worry about the future and just live your life how you want to live it. So motivated. It It was motivating. Just don't work. I mean, I thought, I thought you were going to say I would give myself some advice of like a heads up about, about COVID-19. That's what I thought you were going to say. Like heads up, Uh, get ready. I guess that would work. (laughs) Get all wife that you can right now and tissue it's you're gonna be you're gonna need it yeah yeah especially today yeah before before we sign off i'm gonna leave the floor to you what's just something you want to tell grizz fans who are sitting at home watching this who are just missing you out there play back playing basketball um grizz fans i hope that the season comes back and we get to play in front of you or play play again and you guys are watching and it'll be a fun time all right, John, we appreciate you taking the time to join this edition of Three Point Stance presented by Mountain Dew. We hope to see you one day very, very soon. That's not via our laptops. Yeah, I hope. <laughs>